You know, when you're down and out and you're failing to see the value of life and you think everything is going to come apart, there's always hope. Now, in the Twilight Zone, this episode was an episode of hope, a passage for trumpet. Now, I consider this a top five Twilight Zone episode of the great series, season one. Now, it's episode 32 of TZ. Now, in this one, Jack Clubman plays the, the lead uh, character, Joey Crown, a very, very great, but according to many people, he's hapless. He's down in his luck. He doesn't know what to do to get back to where he wants to get back. He has no money. He has no friends in New York City and no job prospects due to his alcoholism. Looking for a chance to work again. He is turned down by the manager at his old club, who, while appreciating Joey's abilities, knows how unreliable he is. Joey feels his life is worthless. He sells his bell of a trumpet at a pawn shop for cash, and then after a drinking binge, impulsively steps into the path of a speeding truck. The scene is quite effective when he sells it because he's kind of tapping at the, the glass, basically saying, that's mine and I'm giving up on my own life. Now, when he comes to, we realize that nobody can see or hear him and assumes that he's dead. None of the people he sees are ones he recognizes, though he goes to places with which he is familiar. Now, Joey eventually makes his way back to the nightclub, where he's surprised to meet another trumpet player who can not only see him, but also recognizes him. He explains that Joey is in a kind of limbo. It is all the people he encountered who are actually dead. He offers Joey a chance to return to living, if he so chooses, while reminding him that he must take what you get and live with it. With a man's encouragement, Joey decides that he wants to go back. But first he asks for a man's name. For the man's name. And the answer is, call me Gabe. Short for the Archangel Gabriel. Now, Joey wakes up on the street after a collision and is shaken but uninjured. The nervous driver of the truck quickly pushes some money into Joey's hand, saying that his driving record is on the line. Joey buys his trumpet back. Later that night, he's playing the trumpet along his apartment building's roof when a young woman whose laundry is hanging there approaches him to express her admiration. She introduces him himself, herself as Dan and says that she is new to the city. After seeing that she romantically interested in him, an excited Joey offers to show her around town. Now, the closing narration sums it up. Joey Crown, who makes music, and who discovers something about life, that it can be rich and rewarding and full of beauty, just like the music he played. If a person would also pause to look and listen, Joey Crown, who got his clue in the Twilight Zone. Now, this was probably uh, a highlight of uh, Rod Serling's uh, life, because not only he wrote the episode, he named the... Uh, uh, the, the Nan character played by Mary Webster after his own daughter. Now, featured music was by the great Lynn Murray, including uh, numerous trumpet uh, cues. Original air date was uh, May 20th, 1960, or called, called Mother's Day Month. It's a very, very emotional and spiritual episode that really holds up because if you can see the unedited version, it feels like a 90 minute Playhouse 90, no pun intended in a 26, 27-minute episode. And the characterizations are quite strong. And John Anderson as Gabe, one of the most underrated character actors of all time, showed up on a numerous series through the years, including the uh, the, um, the the omnipotent character on Star Trek that eventually kills a whole group of people for attacking uh, his family when he killed the Hushnok. Uh, You know, Anderson is just uh, tremendous. Now, Beginning with this episode lasting through the end of the season, a new title sequence featuring a blinking eye was shown. It featured shorter narration than the original opening. Also, these episodes featured a different star field at the conclusion, which looked more like blinking light bulbs than stars. Now, in his limbo state, Joy's reflection is supposed to be absent from many mirrors, but his reflection is clearly seen twice, once in a window of a theater ticket counter and the other in a jukebox against which he was leaning. Now, Una Ramsey, uh, a veteran studio trumpeter, played for Jack on the soundtrack. Now, uh, TZ's production team used uh, different facets to show uh, that the fact he was in limbo, especially using a set of twins in a very interesting ticket-teller uh, scene. Now, 
Jack Klugman became as important as Burgess Bear did was to the history of Twilight Zone uh, uh, as well. Because Klugman and Praise the Pip and Dead Chip, uh, he can play so many different characters. He can play uh, semi tragic, comedy, whatever. But uh, Passage for Trumpet, he reflects not only, uh, you know, people like artists who are down or luck, but individuals. Sometime what you're up against it, you have to be reminded that somebody's looking over you. And I think with Gabriel uh, looking over uh, Joey really resonated to a lot of people actually in the Maritimes because St. Gabriel is the name of numerous churches in the Maritimes. My home region has two St. Gabriel churches that are very important and are very uh, great buildings that reflect the spirituality of Christ's teachings that uh, a lot of people have to be reminded they're not alone, be, be it if you believe in God or not, because we are not alone. We always have somebody looking out for us in one way or another. And that's what Rod uh, Rod believed in the, uh, the traditions of the strength of the individual when other people give them strength. He believed that you can't do it alone. You need to reach out when hard times are coming. But the scene again when he taps on the glass where he's just basically down he's out, uh, down his luck. I think Passions for Trumpet is a top 50 episode of the, uh, the 1960s for TV because it's going to be shown on uh, City TV in repeats. City TV is very, doing very interesting programming. Uh, because of the writer's strike, they've been showing a lot of vintage shows after midnight, which uh, on Saturday nights after the Montreal Canadiens games now, of course, which WDIV in Detroit did a lot as well, showed late Twilight Zone after the uh, the Pistons and Red Wings games. So, I mean, uh, to me, this is five stars out of five. I always go back to the episode. But John Anderson and uh, Jack Klugman in the same episode, boys, they hit it out of the park. And this was, again, almost 15 years before uh, Quincy, which I'm going to talk about in a future podcast. Uh, Quincy was part of, I think, the greatest year in TV history, 76, 77, but we'll talk about it later on. So Jack Klugman, Burgess Meredith, all these great, uh, Ross Martin as well, my God. Uh, what, a, what a tremendous performance. And we're going to be talking about Dead Ship down the road too in our podcast, Hooky Sequence. So if you like what you're doing with our TZ podcast and all facets, especially on very busy first season, let us know what a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.